Hi guys! Welcome back to Hey Adam G YouTube channel. Thanks for clicking this video once again. I am Adam Henato, a newly independent Filipino pageant vlogger based here in the Philippines, enticing you to click that notification bell and subscribe button for more of my feel-good videos here. So before we go to our topic first, I would just like to take this moment to thank you all for the love and support that you all have been giving me here on this channel. Can't you believe we are now 15,000 strong here on youtube channel thank you so much for all your positive feedback and constructive criticism all the time and yes i really read all your messages so yes i will try to control my voice giggling and stop addressing my foreign guests as sir and ma'am and we'll start calling them on their first name basis instead it's really a muscle memory so i but i will try to keep a mental note of this from now on so Having said this, what's the topic of today's content? Well, I want to talk about Rabia Mateo and how she has been slaying all her pre-pageant activities in LA so far. Why do I say this? Well, you better stick around for my thoughts and insights. As we all know, Rabi has already been in Los Angeles preparing for the last leg of her training for Miss Universe, which will be happening a month from now in Florida. And from what we have seen so far, she has been at par with our previous Miss Universe Philippines delegates. And I must say, hands down, she really deserves to wear that Philippine sash. So before I proceed, let's put this in proper context first. For me, Ever since she has been crowned Miss Universe Philippines, she has been always questioned for two things. One is her height, and the other one is her body proportions. Diba? Napansin niyo yun? But as previously discussed here, Rabia stands at 5 feet and 7 inches tall, but looks smaller on pictures because of her bone structure. And no matter how I tell everyone that she looks taller in person, as evidence when we finally met up for dinner last January, her critics keep pounding on her height. But as what we have seen during her visit to O Skin Scare Spa, owned by Miss Olivia Kido in LA, she really wowed us and she went sa as she went side by side with her two other invited candidates, Miss Universe Colombia and Miss Universe El Salvador. Kaminin naman talaga natin, di ba? For months, we have been so worried about her height that she wouldn't be able to stand out with her other statuesque sisters. But in this event alone, she really didn't look like a dwarf next to them. And I am really impressed. Nakita niyo yon, And probably it helped that her wardrobe and styling have been meticulously planned for the event, along with the succeeding activities, which really made her a standout in this particular event. Because let's face it guys, we all have been been worried about her wardrobe and styling since her crowning moment as it's always been a hit or miss. While most of us people think that it's always a miss, ako feeling ko I see this more as a learning curve for Rabia as it afforded her more time to experiment on different looks and styles which, which would work for her while she was still here in Manila Palang and not in the US right now. And apparently, it worked! Now, as she is in the US, we can see that she has been styled impeccably from head to toe, no longer looking like a nene or alam yung pilit na sexy, as she has been finally able to get that right mix of clothes that flatter her or do not overpower her instead. And, for, and from this, there are two takeaways I am learning from this. One, I think this goes to show that with the right styling, her beautiful face easily stands out as what we have seen skincare's uh, sponsor visit. And two, this event really disproves all rumors her wardrobe for the pageant isn't ready yet. So having said all of this, I can definitely say that she is ready for Miss Universe right now as the various wardrobe that she has been showcasing us could already be her wardrobe for the pageant proper. And for sure, we would have been satisfied. Having said this, credit really goes to the Miss Universe Philippines organization for working hard silently to make Rabia a standout from the moment she set foot in the United States. As I have been telling you all along, they really didn't have the franchise just to dilly-dally and take everything in stride. Imagine, just for Rubia's styling and wardrobe alone, they even came up with a lookbook for every outfit of Rubia from among the 100 fashion designers who pitched their ideas for Rubia. And I know the lookbook isn't an original idea because some of our neighboring countries have been doing it like Thailand. 
but the organization MUP elevated the concept in making it a magazine style concept wherein we could see close-up details of her accessories where it's been sourced from and full body outfit shots plus the inspirations of the designers in terms of sketches so in other words these fashion designers are given their spotlight as well so alam mo nakakabilib talaga eh this i think this is such a well thought out plan by the organization and apart from her styling and wardrobe, I also love how she has been releasing her pasabog photo shoots left and right lately. The latest is her Darna inspired photo shoot done by Seven Barreto, wherein it showcased a right balance of Rabia's empowerment and fierceness. A perfect theme for her candidacy leading up to the Miss Universe pageant. And it just amazes me how this organization has, has so many things in its arsenal just in the nick of time. Because for months, diba, we have been nitpicking her Rabia's lack of quality photo shoots and even scoring the organization for not making a collaborative photo shoot with a certain famous photography photographer here in Manila. But as what we have been seeing on Rabia in Los Angeles right now, she has been doing a lot of indoor and outdoor shoots with her entourage in tow. Diba? Nakita niyo yan. Parang big time celebrity lang ang dating ni Rabia doon eh. With everything prepared for her as she is well taken care of in every aspect of the last leg of her training. So, alam mo yun guys? So there is nothing to, re to be really worried about Rabia after all, diba? But you know what? Beyond the styling and wardrobe of Rabia, what amazes me more is Rabia's communication skills. She just has this special gift she just has this special gift to connect with her audience with her authenticity and personality. I mean, let's face it, diba? It's been considered a rite of passage already that prior to leaving for Miss Universe, our candidates would be subjected to some sort of a ABS-CBN press tour like guesting in Magandang Gabi Vice or, or in Boy Abunda shows. But so far, Rabia has been acquitting herself in interviews there in LA, whether it's formal or casual. You can see that she has been trained well for this aspect as her personality talaga truly comes out more. In short, hindi memorize ang mga sagot ni Rabia. And when she answers questions and constructs her sentences, she isn't using filler words like basically, alam niyo yun, like, I believe, as it's always straight to the point, napansin niyo yun. And she really expresses herself very well and even offering quotable quotes which will make you feel inspired and stoked after hearing her speak. May quality siyang ganun talaga guys eh. She really can talk and as early as now I am predicting that she will really slay her speech, speech and Q&A segments come finals night on May 16. So overall whether MUP foresaw this or not, this unplanned early US arrival has been benefiting Rabia in a lot of ways. Yes, the, their main goal was to leave the country due to our worsening pandemic situation. But look how leaving one month earlier than scheduled has done wonders on Rabia so far. Now she was able to work on her jet lag, body clock, or even getting used to the weather. And if she might have forgotten important last minute needs or requirements for the pageant, for sure a lot of our Carbobayans and there in LA will really help her. And with Sir Jonas by her side 24-7, there is really nothing to worry about. And you know what? As And as I all the more ponder on Rabia's chances in Miss Universe soon, I can't help but notice how a lot of things beyond her control are slowly turning out to be favorable for her. Alam niyo, napapansin niyo, let's take for instance the exclu exclusive Lazada Philippines voting for the Philippines. You know, there were people who got confused with how the voting mechanics was explained initially. Kasama na ako. But you know what? After all these clarification talk that only our country could exclusively use this app for Rabia to get that popular vote in top 21, it makes me feel it gives Rabia a whole new non-pageant fan base who could vote for her for the pageant. Of course, tayo mga pageant fans, we all know the mechanics of this. But for ordinary Filipinos who don't know anything about Miss Universe, just by shopping online on Lazada will make them be aware or afford them the chance to vote for Rubia online. So in a way, it's spreading awareness about our candidate without the latter doing so much effort just for this aspect. And I think this is such a brilliant move from the part of Lazada as it kind of reminded me of Pia when she sought the help of Aldab for her game plan in 2015. I mean, 
Ito nila isipin nyo, imagine guys, out of the 104 million Filipinos right now in the Philippines, let's say bumoto kay Rabia 1 million, 1 million Filipinos, that's still a lot, even technically if it's only 1% of the entire population, right? And if you are not convinced enough pa, if you are worried about Rabia now, it's safe to say that as early as now, she will easily be pulled out for a lot of sponsor events in the upcoming Miss Universe pageant because of the list of sponsors of, of the pageant. Because as we all know, and daming Filipino brands who are sponsoring this year's edition. And let's not paint a negative implication about it na sabin anju advantage or whatever kay Rabia yun. I mean... Come on, let's look back na lang on the 2018 edition in Thailand. Diba? So let's look at Miss Thailand. Diba? Being the host delegate then in 2018, she was obviously being pulled out in a lot of events during that time. But it just so happened that Catriona was also formidable that time. So if you apply it to Rabia's case right now, it's not Rabia's fault that it is turning out to be an advantage for her. Diba? So overall guys, with everything I have said, it feels like this 69th edition is so worth following. However, it's very short and fast. Diba? Ngayon pa lang nararamdaman ko na, na all these blessings are slowly trickling, trickling down uh, Rabia's favor. Because not only she deserves it, but if you will all be given a chance to get to know her better, napakabait talaga niyang tao and busilak talaga ang kalooban. So, alam mo yun, guys, may laban talaga tayo eh. I'd rather let you guys keep underestimating her and play the underdog card so that when she finally peaks at the right moment, boom. ba? So, kung ako talaga ang tatanungin nyo, this LA trip just made Rabia a strong contender for the Miss Universe pageant. Kung ano man yung mga doubts, worries natin dito sa Manila noon, in terms of styling, in terms of kung napapabayaan ba siya, na-wipe out lahat yon kung paano siya tinututukan ngayon ng Miss Universe Philippines Organization. Whether, alam mo yon kung whether yung tinatrabaho talaga ni Rabia yung dapat niyang gawin, and natutuwa ako na talagang nag improve meron siyang bagong palaging pinapakita, and ayaw niyo yun, pag meron tayong bagong nakikita sa kanya, natutuwa tayo, parang something unexpected and refreshing, Diba? So, it's something na dapat nating subaybayan when she finally comes to Florida for the upcoming Miss Universe pageant. So guys, what do you think about my my views about my early assess assessment on Rubia right now? Does it match yours? Well, feel free to share your opinion down below so I could see where you guys are coming from. Alright guys, isang buwan na lang at Miss Universe na! Kita-kits ulit tayo for the next update. Bye guys! Take care!